Parshas Va'era, we see the continuing conversation between the Almighty and Moses, between our Kodesh Baruch and Moshe Rabbeinu, about the nature of his shlichus, of his task, of his agency. The Almighty tells him, talk to Paro, tell Paro to send the Jews out of Egypt. And Moshe makes several arguments, and this all starts uh, in last week's Parsha as well, with the burning bush. God designates Moshe as um, at least the spokesman and perhaps the redeemer as agent of the Almighty. And Moshe objects. He says, He says, I have a, a heavy tongue, a heavy mouth. Not a good speaker. Why are you choosing me to speak to Paro? And a Kaddish Baruch Hu, uh, responds with a, um, a couple of things. He, he loses patience, uh, as it were, with Moshe in last week's Parsha. And he says, okay, I'm going to give you Aaron to help you out. And this week's Parsha, the theme recurs. Shems gives Moshe instructions about what to say to, to Paro about releasing the Jews from bondage. And the Torah relates in Perak Vav Pasuk Tes, that's 6, 9. Um, excuse me, let's go to 6, yes, 6, 9. By Debar Moshe, Cain, O Bnei Yisrael. So Moshe said what Hashem told him to, to do, to say to Bnei Yisrael, to the children of Israel. Lo shamu el Moshe mikotze ruach And they didn't listen to Moshe because of a shortness of spirit and hard work. And then Hashem renews the charge. And he says, Hashem says to Moshe, saying, Now, bo daber el paro, melech mitzrayim. Now speak to Paro, king of Egypt, that he should send the children of Israel from his land. And Moshe spoke before God, saying, So he said what the um, Chazal say is a kal v'chomer. It's reasoning from a more um, compelling case a less compelling case to a more compelling case, sometimes referred to as the argument of a forciari. Kal v'chomer, B'nai Yisrael won't listen to me. How's Paro going to listen to me? V'ani aras v'asayim, and I am of impeded speech. I'm of closed lips. So Moshe seems to be reviving this objection that he made originally, which caused um, some confrontation with the Almighty. But he says it again. He says, I'm not the man for the job. He doesn't say that explicitly, but he says, how is power going to listen to me? B'nai Yisrael didn't listen to me. Presumably the argument is, and they have skin in the game. They they would want the result of what I'm saying. Paro doesn't want the result of what I'm saying. How is he going to uh, take the message? He's not going to listen. And the, But the Moshe throws in, what, what is Moshe thinking? That he's raising an objection that the Almighty rejected already. And then we fast forward to many verses and Vaidaber, this is now twenty nine, same chapter six. Pasukov test Vaidaber Hashem al Moshe Limor, and Hashem said to Moshe, saying, "Ani Hashem, I am God. Daber Paro Melach Mitzrayim, Eis Kol Hashem Ani Dover Lecha. You tell Paro, the King of Egypt, everything I said to you." And now Moshe responds the exact same way. Vayomer Moshe lefnei Hashem, and Moshe said before God, "Hein Ani Aras Vasaim Veech Hishma Elai Paro. I am of closed lips." How is Paro going to listen to me? What's Moshe thinking? He raised this objection when he was first appointed. He was, his objection was swatted down by the Almighty. He raised it again after apparently the Jews didn't listen to him. Maybe Moshe didn't know why they didn't listen. The Torah tells us, the Torah says it was mikotze rach It's because of a shortness of spirit and, and an uh, overwhelming amount of work or difficult work. But Moshe says, I'm, I'm not a speaker. And he's, he raises the objection again. Wouldn't we call this chutzpah? It appears to be. Moshe keeps raising the same objection that the Almighty rejected at the very beginning. What is going on? The Nitziv reads these verses very carefully, both Yud Beis and Lamed, 12 and 30. And he says, listen to the words. It doesn't say, Vaidaber Moshe El Hashem, or Vayomer Moshe El Hashem. It doesn't say Moshe spoke to God. 
it says, Vayidaber <clears throat> Moshe lifnei Hashem limor. And Moshe spoke before Hashem, saying, the Ritziv reads into this, that lifnei Hashem means, Ksiv lifnei Hashem, Shadiber tzaro bifnei atzmo, ma'yem said. He was talking, Moshe was talking to himself, and he was, he was distressed, and he was going over this in his mind. But it's not to Hashem, but it's Lifnei Hashem, before Hashem. What does it mean before Hashem? It means that he was speaking to himself, and Hashem heard him. It was in the context of the conversation. And for that reason, Moshe, uh, Hashem responds, and he says, I'll give you our own, etc. But what we see is Moshe accepts, accepts the Shlichus. He accepts the mission this mission impossible, if you will, in his eyes, he accepts it. But he's plagued, according to the Nitziv, he's plagued by self-doubt. He doesn't see how he's going to accomplish the goal. He doesn't reject the goal. He doesn't reject the mission. But he thinks he is not up to the task. And the Nitziv says, Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, who was uh, Rosh Yeshiva, the famous Yeshiva Svalashin in the uh, 1800s, and he says, I'm not up to the task. I know I'm not up to the task. God wants me to do it. I'll do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I just don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it. And yet, he persists. And he does exactly as he's told. This is Gadol Hanavim. This is the greatest prophet of all time. About whom the Almighty said the communication that God has with Moshe is qualitatively different than communications with any other human being, including great prophets. Pe el pe adaber bo. I speak to him mouth to mouth. Whatever that means, we know it is different than from all the others. And yet, Moshe is plagued by self-doubt. He also wants to know how God operates. That he asks later on in, in the Chumash. He asks, Hodieni uh, noah, estrachecha, this is the famous in Shmos, later on in the in, in the Chumash. He says, please tell me how you work. And God says, Lo yirani adam you, you can't figure me out. I am impossible for you, for a human being, implicitly a finite being, to understand me. Moshe accepts the task even though he doesn't understand. He accepts the task even though he feels he's not up to it. Moshe stands as a model for all of us. I would posit that there are many times when each of us takes on a mission that we have to accomplish and we're plagued by self-doubt and we think we can't do it. And we learn from Moshe Rabbeinu. Kodesh Baruch Hu gives us a task. We carry it out. We can have self-doubt. We will have self-doubt. But that self-doubt is meaningless when it's contrasted with Ritzon Habori, with the desire of Kodesh Baruch Hu. Chazal teach us that Kodesh Baruch Hu doesn't give anyone a challenge that is greater than they can handle. So, we have self-doubt. That's part of the human condition. We wonder whether we're up to the task, and Kodesh Baruch Hu gives it to us, and we do it. The challenge is to do it as though we are not plagued by self-doubt, and to, to assume whatever posture it takes put our nose to the grindstone, our heads down, our shoulders to the wheel, whatever it is, but we get it done. Certainly this is the case for um, people in all manner of difficult situations, whether it's um, training for a job, or looking for a shidduch, or running a family, or paying tuition, whatever it is. And there are challenges. There is no question that there are challenges. The challenges are not Im imaginary. They're real. But at the end of the day, if we're doing Ritzon Habore, if we're doing God's will, he's behind us. And despite whatever shortcomings we may be painfully aware of that we have, if HaKadosh Baruch is behind us, then we have the power to get it done. Have a good Shabbos.